What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be showing you a bunch of tips, tricks, and hacks to get more out of the Roland MC-101, speed up your workflow, and overall make it an even better device to work with. Some of these tips are picked up from comments left by viewers, some of these are picked up by just tinkering and personal experience, and some of them are picked up from actually reading through the manual. So. Without any further ado, let's jump in. First of all, I've got a jam here I'm gonna be using as kind of an example, so let me just play that. The first thing I want to show you is a fairly simple workflow hack. If you wanna change a parameter, but do so very quickly, there's a shortcut for that. So if I want to change how long a clip is, how many steps it is, I'll hit shift, hit the clip as normal, go to step length, select that. And now I could scroll all the way up to 128 for a full eight bar loop, or I can hold down shift to have this jump by tens all the way up. And this will work for pretty much everything where holding down shift and twisting the value knob will let you jump through stuff by much greater values and greatly reduce the amount of time you spend just twisting this darn knob. Moving on, I've left one track blank here so I can demonstrate a bunch of stuff. First of all, this is just something that was introduced by one of the firmware updates. If you hit note a second time, you get chords. Hit it again. Just get back to your normal notes. Also, a lot of you probably already know this, but if you hit shift and then note, you can adjust a bunch of this stuff, including change your scale. So let me just change this to an arbitrary one. But one thing I didn't know until I looked in the manual is that if you still want to be able to go octave up and octave down, still using these buttons, you activate them by holding down note and they will still work. But then if you just hit them normally as notes, they won't just make you jump around, which is super nice. So let me actually just record in something. So let's say that that sucked because it did. How do I get rid of that quickly and efficiently? Go into sequence and then rather than just getting all these individually and deselecting the note, I'm just going to hit shift and then project and then sequence that cleared the entire clip. Or let's do that again. If I want to just delete individual notes, I go to sequence and then hit shift project, select the note, that'll just clear it right off the bat. Super nice because otherwise, jumping back and forth between sequence and note is a gigantic pain and this dramatically speeds that workflow up. Also, if you want to change a note without bouncing back and forth, select the step and use these right here to change the velocity and even the note itself. It's kind of finicky, it's not ideal, but for quick edits where you just hit one wrong note, it can definitely work. And maybe velocity is a little more forgiving. Up next is sort of a hack, but not really. It's just the advice to maximize your layers by loading up a drum track. So an example of me doing that here is I've got my normal drums, of course. But I've also got this bass stab loaded in. And if I wanted to take this even further, I could do something like choose a WAV file, choose that horn, import that, do that for this one as well. And then select sound, select this guy, and let's change the key offset. Now, let's say I only need those two samples. All that is living on one track, leaving the other three synth tracks completely free, which is a really lovely kind of ability that this device has, and I really like the way it handles samples because of that. Also worth noting on this drum track is if I let this play three times, it will switch to the next clip. So here are the two clips. The second clip has those extra little kick hits in there and removes that bass hit. And the way that I've done this is using a couple features of clip chain. And once again, this is just a feature that they introduced, but I don't think people know how to use it. So let's give that a look. Hold down shift, select the step. Let's go to next clip. And I've set this to clip two. 
So it's gonna trigger clip two. But if I did that right off the bat, it would just go and then go straight to clip two, which is not what I want. I want it to repeat three times and then switch to clip two. So the way that I do that is I go to the next window and now I can set the length of time in steps. That's the kind of unit of measurement here. Select the length to be how many steps I want this clip to run before it does that end condition of switching to the second clip. So the way that manifests, I'll let that play. Ran for 48 steps and then switched to the second clip because of these two windows. And this guy is set just to off, so that means it's just gonna run through its entire clip and then do whatever the end condition is. In this case, switch back to clip one. Now, these can just do that ping-ponging thing where this plays three times, this plays once, this plays three times, so on and so forth, which is super nice. And it's actually not that bad of a system for chaining clips. Like, it's obviously not nearly as intuitive as something like a pocket operator, but I'll take it. Another trick for working with samples that I didn't think you could do, but it turns out you just can, is use folders. So, let's say I want to switch out this sound, hit shift, wave file, and you've probably already noticed from early on in this video that I have a few different folders loaded on the SD card. There's nothing special you have to do in formatting this stuff, just drop in a folder and drop sounds in it, and that's it. So I have a bunch of these arranged in alphabetical order but then I've gotten smarter since then, and now I have a folder for like bass growls, I have a folder for splice loops and longer sounds, and I have a folder for splice one shots like drum hits, bass hits, all that kind of stuff. One more function that I wanna draw your attention to about working with samples, and this relates much more to the tone track. So I've got this tone track here. And this is a synth pluck sample. But despite the fact that this is only a sample and not actually something in the synth engine, you still have a lot of control. So if you hit shift, sound, setting, you can go to something like say, portamento and turn that on. Go to port of time and let me just take this all the way down and then start bringing it up to taste. That's a bit much. Really nice way to add a bit of life and a bit of kind of organic character to a sample and make it feel much more like an actual synth track. You can even do something like add vibrato. And obviously this is getting super messy, but hopefully you get the idea. There's a ton of control that you're offered in here, so I would highly recommend spending some time messing with it. You can change your release. Have it just cut off or have it ring out in its entirety. And in this case, I've also set the mono and poly to mono so that each note cuts off the previous note. And this has gotten pretty messy at this point, but you get the idea. Let me uh, reload this clip. And let's talk a bit about scatter because I used to dismiss this a bit as kind of a gimmick, not all that useful, but I've come around once I figured out how to properly use it. So right now it's affecting everything, and I think that's a bit much. So I'm gonna hold shift, scatter, and now I can go all the way to near the end and hit setting, and set my position to say just the bass tracks. So that's track three. it only affects that track now, which is lovely and really makes it a lot more useful. And it also means that it will come through when you record it via USB for each individual track. And you can only send it to either the master or one track at a time, but that makes it much more useful regardless. Let me go back to setting because there's one other thing I wanna mention, split and scale. You heard that sped that up by double. That's super useful to have if I wanted to make it go slower, I also could. And also it's worth playing around with split as well because I've had some luck with that, especially for like a tape stop type effect. Let me uh, bring that down even further. 
At this point, uh, this has devolved into chaos. I would recommend tinkering with this a bit and adjusting it to taste, but the fact that you can is super nice and makes it much more useful than it initially seemed to me. There are a bunch of other hacks that I also want to draw your attention to, but those have dedicated videos about them and not all of them are by me and I don't wanna steal anyone else's thunder, so I'm gonna recommend this playlist that's over to the side of me. In that, you're gonna learn from me how to flip samples on the Roland MC-101 like you would, especially in genres like hip hop and house. There are also tea break beats videos that will show you how to get infinite tracks by basically bouncing stuff down to one single looper track. So if you're brave and really committed to what you're working on, that's something worth giving a go. And tea break beats in general is absolutely fantastic for Roland MC-101 tips, tricks, and hacks. And I highly recommend checking out his videos if you're at all interested in this topic. And finally, there's gonna be a video Video that shows you how to change your default settings to selecting a sound not by what the track overall is doing, but by each clip, which is a problem that I've had where I go in, I choose a sound, I start making something, and then I realize that I want different clips to have different sounds, and setting that up after the fact removes the sound from your clip, so you have to find it again and possibly tweak it again to your specifications. And so setting sounds to be controlled by clips by default is gonna be super useful if you like to switch sounds out frequently over the course of a song. So by now that playlist should have popped up here, so be sure to hit that up if you want to dive even deeper into Roland MC 101 tips, tricks, and hacks. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.